Okay, in this video we're going to talk about um, an inverse trig function, specifically arcsine. We're going to see where the graph comes from, why it has the domain and range that it has, um, and then also kind of how I think about them, which uh, I think might help you to uh, work with them in various problems. So uh, we're going to start with the graph of just plain old sine. Um, so you can see the uh, period is 2 pi, the increment is pi over 2, maximum is 1, and minimum is negative 1. Um, the problem with trig functions is that for a function to have an inverse that is a function, uh, the original function needs to be one-to-one, -one, which means that each y value must be associated with only one x value. And uh, that means that it will pass the uh, horizontal line test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a horizontal line. So you can see that. And you can see that it's actually intersecting the graph uh, in a lot of places just on this part of the graph. And then, of course, it'll intersect it in an infinite number of places if we keep going forever. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start limiting the domain uh, to make this a one-to-one -one function. So since it'd be really nice to keep every angle between 0 and pi over 2, um, what I'm going to do is keep that and erase everything else that would cause me problems. So uh, I can have every y value in between 0 and 1 at this point. So let's start erasing. Anywhere that it intersects outside of 0 to pi over 2. So we erase this. I'm going to erase that and that's got to go, and that's got to go. So all I'm left with is um, sine from 0 to pi over 2. If I keep that, then I get the half of the range from 0 to 1. So that's half the range. Now I need to repeat the process um, down below. And I'd like to keep a continuous little bit of this if I could. So here is my horizontal line, and I'm going to go through the same process. So I'm going to keep the part from negative pi over 2 to 0, so that the thing that I'm left with is a nice continuous little section of sign. So erasing, erasing, there we go, there, and let me fill that in. So this graph that we're looking at right here is only a little section of sign, and it's between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, but what's important is on that interval, the graph is actually 1 to 1. Um, it covers the entire range of sign, and it's one to one, which means that it has an inverse that will be a function and it's gonna work for us, right? So let's uh, take this and I'm gonna make that graph a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna graph sine between negative pi over two and pi over two. So I have this and I've kind of opened it up and I'm counting by pi over six on the horizontal now. And so uh, some of the points that are on there, um, zero, zero, obviously, uh, pi over six, one half, and pi over 2, 1. Those are really the only like super nice points that I can plot. And then if I go in the negative direction, it'll be negative pi over 6, negative 1 half, and then negative pi over 2, negative 1. And then let me put a curve through that. It's really hard to draw that curve, or at least for me it is. Um, so this is my limited function. So what I want to do is I want to create the uh, inverse function. So I want to create y equals uh, inverse sine of x, or arc sine of x. So if I set up my axes, you can see that now on the horizontal I have negative 1 to 1, um, and on the vertical I have from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, because remember, the domain of the original becomes the range of the inverse, and the range of the original becomes the domain of the inverse. Um, so that's why things have switched for us. And uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot some points, or uh, notice some points on uh, the original graph and turn them into points on the inverse. So the first point here is negative pi over 2, negative 1 which means the inverse is going to have a point at negative 1, negative pi over 2. And uh, this next nice point here is negative pi over 6, negative 1 half, which means our inverse is going to have a point at negative 1 half, negative pi over 6. And then 0, 0, which I'm not going to label. Um, pi over 6, 1 half gives me the point 1 half, comma, pi over 6. And then finally, uh, pi over 2, comma, 1 is a nice point there, so 1, comma, pi over 2 will be a nice point here. Um, so now I'm going to connect these, and uh, it's, again, I'm not very good at that, but this is the graph of arc sine. So you should memorize this graph, and you should memorize those five key points, um, and if you need to, you can always think about the limited graph of sine to get this graph of arc sine, which is not really the hardest thing to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this video here, come back in another video, and tell you a little bit more, because I don't like when my videos run over five minutes. So uh, hope this was helpful, and good luck.